Uh, Dennis, you're still locked up. I'm still locked up. Great scenes we're seeing there from Sydney. I uh, tell you what, Melbourne won't get much relief until the Melbourne Cup. Josh Frydenberg says, of course, um, lockdowns are over. It's not going to happen again. But, you know, the federal government hasn't had much power, as we've seen throughout this pandemic. Can they hold him to it? Uh, can they now open up Queensland and WA borders? Where's this headed? Uh, well, uh, Peter... Uh... I have to say, uh, I, I'm getting a little bit more personal freedom today. Uh, like the Prime Minister, I'm out of two weeks uh, quarantine, uh, but of course I'm still barred down in the ACT. Uh, look, I think at the moment the, the, the pandemic and the economy are at a crucial stage, obviously uh, for the national economy and the health of the economy, but also at a political point. What we're actually seeing here is the opportunity for the Prime Minister and for Josh Frydenberg as federal treasurer to start to make an agenda which is a federal agenda, which is there uh, is for theirs to control, so that the economy, uh, climate change, defence, national security, all these are issues that the federal government controls. What we've had over the last 12 months and will continue to have uh, uh, for a while is, is premiers trying to push their own agenda trying to exercise their own power. And, of course, uh, if the election were held before Christmas, we'd have premiers in Western Australia and Queensland at least uh, lining up against Scott Morrison and joining Anthony Albanese so that in the federal election, Scott Morrison, if he didn't hold it uh, until next year, would be facing a coalition of Labor premiers and a federal Labor opposition leader. That may still happen to a degree, but the extent to mm. which the success of the opening up in Victoria and, uh, and New South Wales, of course, particularly, but also in Victoria, where you have Daniel Andrews saying he's going to open up despite this huge surge in, in cases. So what we're having here is a split as the economy becomes the issue, as the economy improves, as, the, as they say it will, as the Federal Reserve Bank says it will, then what we're actually looking at is the possibility of to shift the politics with that great psychological blow of opening up for the federal government and to come in and pressure the recalcitrant premiers in Western Australia and Queensland to likewise open up. This will be the pressure, the internal economic and business pressure on Anastasia Palaszczuk and Mark McGowan. And it's a political bonus if Scott Morrison and manage to push this momentum through into next year and people are talking about the economy, national security, all those federal issues where his mm. authority is, is much more uh, uh, obvious than it has been with the premiers being able to order lockdowns and border controls. All right, I'm going to cross to uh, Sydney and talk to a publican about uh, first day with the taps open and the bar ready uh, in just a moment. But look, uh, you know, you talked about federal issues, the economy absolutely front and centre. That's where the government wants it to be uh, within an election looming. Gross debt, as we know, forecast to be $1 trillion by the end of the decade. A new analysis out today from Deloitte Economics, budget deficits they're talking about, $120 billion dollars. That's one year's deficit for next year. Importantly, Dennis, the Deloitte director, Chris Richardson, the economist, he's out calling for a renewed focus, he says, on budget repair in light of those numbers. Now, that's fair enough. It used to be the coalition's call equity. But I tell you what, it's hard because for pandemic reasons, of course, they've racked up all these billions of dollars of debt in the last two years. How can they run an election on austerity? Well, they can't. So how do you deal with debt? unless you start to wind back your spending? Well, I think uh, that's true, that the government can't run an austerity uh, agenda at the next election. I think what is most likely is particularly if we see a sharp economic recovery after the opening up of the New South Wales and Victorian economies, uh, is that we'll probably see an earlier budget next year uh, and that uh, Josh Frydenberg and Scott Morrison are certainly considering this that they would have an early budget and then go to an election straight away. Scott Morrison has form on doing this previously. He's not afraid to campaign during Easter. And so I think that uh, how the economy goes early next year will be very important.
But at that stage, they're still not going to be talking about cutting services to save money or to reduce debt. I think what the government will be saying, what the coalition's argument will be, is that on their track record, uh, they have demonstrated superior economic uh, control in the past. At the time it was needed, they provided pandemic success, uh, support during JobKeeper. And Labor, of course, said that they shouldn't take JobKeeper away and wanted to prolong JobKeeper. The argument from Scott Morrison and Josh Frydenberg is, yes, we'll have to ultimately reduce debt and have austerity. But in the meantime, they, the coalition, will do a better job uh, than Labor, which has wanted to continue the big spending despite their arguments about deficit and debt uh, last year. So I think it's a question of well, we'll the see. devil you know we'll rather see. than the devil you don't. <laughs> we'll see. Dennis Shanahan, thank you as always. Good luck with Thanks, your Peter. mini reprieve.